Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the channel. My name is Don Felker, and on this channel, I teach software developers how to become independent consultants so you can survive and thrive in the world of consulting so you can accomplish what we all want to accomplish, and that's a life of autonomy, which is exactly what consulting can provide to you. On today's show, what I'm gonna talk about is actually a viewer question. And the viewer wanted to know, and this is reading from the email that I received from them, my most pressing question is around application development is, as a mobile app developer, how can I improve at the latest and greatest technologies and methods that are currently out? Uh, in fact, this is a fantastic question. And there's a number of ways in which you can stay current in your field. And this applies not just to mobile developers, but also applies to anyone else who is in software in general. It doesn't matter if you're a web developer or if you're a mobile developer or backend or even some other type of engineer in general. There's always a way to stay on top of it. And these same principles will transcend across all of those different types of engineering disciples. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Number one, and this is going to be the most important in my opinion, because it's exactly what I've used over the course of my career to really improve my skills over the years is to use my passive time wisely. So what is passive time? Passive time is gonna be things like when you're driving, and you basically you get your hands on the wheel and you're paying attention to the real world in front of you. Everything's going on, but your mind is kind of idle, maybe kind of on autopilot. You know how to get to your destination and everything is kind of just happening by itself. But your mind is not really doing that's passive activity. The same thing for is for going and doing your dishes or cleaning the house, maybe even doing some yard work out in the back, like raking some leaves or even just going for a walk or going for a run. A lot of times those activities, you're not really mentally engaged in anything. And you can use that passive time as an opportunity to learn. So what do you learn in during these passive activities? That's a fantastic question as well. This is exactly where podcasts and audiobooks are gonna come into play. In early 2006, I found podcasting. Well, in fact, I'd found it many years before, but I never found any real interest in it because I didn't find any topics that I found interesting. But around 2005 and six is when I found some programming podcasts. And I started listening to these podcasts during my commute to and from work. And personally, I feel if I listen to a podcast that's around my job, say I'm an engineer, software engineer, and I listen to some type of software engineering podcast on the way to work, it puts me in the mood already to, when I walk into work with ideas and I'm fresh and I'm ready to go and I'm actually kind of pumped up to start the day. Furthermore, I learned during this time. So this time that I would normally spend, maybe if it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes, hour or more, and hopefully you don't have a crazy commute. During that time, I can then use that passive time to become active time. So now my mind is actively engaged and listening to the podcast or audio book about whatever the topic might be. In this case, it's gonna be a technology. So if you're in Android development, you might listen to, for example, my podcast, or you might listen to a podcast from Android developers backstage, or a bunch of other podcasts that have recently come out inside of the Android ecosystem, or just in software in general. If you're an iOS developer, you'll listen to iOS podcasts. You kind of get the point. You can go on to any of the podcast platforms, Personally, I love the Pocket Cast app. So download whatever app you would like and then go in there and search and just search for Rails or Ruby on Rails if that's your thing or iOS development or Android development and you're gonna find some podcasts on there. Now, if you are listening and you are actually a podcast host, what I recommend that you do inside of your title is put whatever type of podcast you are. If you're just a software podcast like we are now, we put software podcast. Previously, we were just basically all around Android development. So for you, if you run a podcast, you're gonna wanna put, say it's a Ruby on Rails podcast and it's called, you know, uh, something Ruby. Inside the title, I'd put also put a Ruby developer podcast or a Ruby on Rails podcast. This is so that it helps you with your on application SEO of the actual podcast app. It's something most podcast folks don't think of, but it does matter. So if somebody is searching for a Ruby on Rails podcast or an Android podcast, they're gonna find yours if it's in the title. So again, those four things that I really highly recommend you use that are normally passive activities to turn them into active activities are gonna be driving, doing the dishes, yard work, and perhaps running or walking. All those things, you can burn through a lot of great podcasts and a lot of good books. 
and it's a fantastic way to stay abreast to current technologies uh, and things that you maybe want to learn. Number two, you're going to follow popular developer accounts and developer evangelist accounts. Now, what is a, we already know what a developer is, that's someone like me and you who develop software for a living. And there's a lot of folks who have these accounts, social media accounts on Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, and go follow these popular accounts. These accounts are gonna usually help and educate you throughout the day. Most likely you're probably already on Twitter or one of these things anyway. So tune your feed to an opportunity to learn. And what's gonna end up happening is you're naturally gonna start seeing various different topics pop up in your feed that are related to the information that you're interested in. Perhaps there's a new library that came out for a platform that you're working on. This is a fantastic way to kind of understand, hey, what's going on that's in my local area, within my local you know, realm of influence. How can I you know, pick up some more information in regards to that? And through social is gonna be a fantastic way just because everybody loves to talk about the new things that are coming out. So that's a good way to stay abreast about it now, but it's not gonna teach you everything you need to know. That might expose you to some of the new podcasts that are coming out or to maybe a YouTube video or something like that. Which leads me to follow popular YouTube channels that post content about what you prefer. On these channels, you're gonna have various different free courses. And in fact, I have a course right here on this channel that shows you how to start learning and programming in the Kotlin programming language. It's over nine hours long. You can just take a look inside of the videos here. It's a nine hour Kotlin programming language course. You don't need to know any Kotlin and you can learn it from the ground up. It's 100% free. Now, if you're also interested in a way to start developing maybe iOS apps. There's tons of iOS content creators out there on YouTube that you can follow and take their free courses and learn from them. So start searching on YouTube. YouTube is actually the second biggest search engine right behind Google. So a lot of people search for a lot of content on YouTube. So go there, see what you can find and start following a lot of popular folks on there who create different types of content that you're interested in, in regards to the programming language or technology you're working in. And also go follow the main YouTube accounts as well of the companies that produce the main you know, application framework that you're using. If you're using something like the Android framework, you'll want to find, follow the Android developers YouTube channel. And this goes also as well for the social media accounts. You'll want to follow the Android developers social media accounts as in regards to any other platforms you're interested in. Number four, you're going to want to make sure you, you take courses. Now we kind of covered this already inside the YouTube stuff, but courses are going to be offered on various different platforms. You'll see people teach these courses on their own platforms, such as uh, WordPress on their own website, from to Thinkific, to Teachable, uh, to Pluralsight, to Udemy, you're gonna name it. There's These courses are everywhere. If you hear about something perhaps either in through a podcast, social media, a YouTube, maybe somebody on YouTube mentions, here's this cool new library or here's this new thing and you can't really find a good course on it, go search on one of these other platforms and find a course. Chances are someone's selling something out there for it. Now, there is various different sites that are good and bad. Check out the reviews, of course. But I recommend that you take a course and visually learn and watch somebody build something with that actual technology. Now, you may decide to use that technology or not, which kind of brings us to the last one, number five here, which is create test projects with that new technology. But you got to use a simple domain. And I talked about this in a recent podcast that I have. And in that podcast, I talk about how you need to use a simple domain when you're building your test project. And that just needs to be a note taking app or maybe just a calorie tracker. And I'm not talking about scanning in UPCs. I'm just talking about entering a number into a field, saving it to a database, etc. Now, if you're going to learn a new technology, you want to stick with a simple domain because you don't want to have to focus on that domain too much. You want to be worrying about the technology and learning the technology. You shouldn't be confused about what the problem domain is. You should make that very clear and it should be have no problems understanding what a note taking app is. So use a simple domain when you build a test application. So anything you've learned in the previous steps, you may have decided, hey, here's, you know, I'm gonna give you a perfect example. Jetpack Compose from Android just recently came out and maybe that's something you really wanna learn. What I recommend there is finding a course on it. Go watch that course, understand how to use it. Read a couple of tutorials online as well, which are gonna be additional blogs and so forth. And then from there, go build a test project with it. At that point, what that's gonna do is solidify that knowledge in your head to help you realize, is this something that I really wanna use in my job, my current next project, or anything like that. 
So you may have heard me just briefly mention blogs and I should have mentioned this earlier before and I kind of should lump this in with YouTube as well. When you're searching online, you're gonna find a bunch of different tutorials. Some are gonna be video-based and some are gonna be text-based. And the text ones are going to be usually some type of blogs or some company that is writing tutorials. So both those are valid, YouTube and, and text tutorials. So that's usually the best way I recommend staying abreast to new technologies, new developments, new methods inside of your industry. So let's quickly recap these. So we have five different options. Number one, use your passive time wisely. This is gonna be driving, doing the dishes, doing yard work, running, walking, anything like that. Listen to a podcast or a book. Find different podcasts that you're interested in in your technology that you'd like to learn about and listen to them on a regular occurrence. Especially if you're commuting by yourself in your car, it's a fantastic opportunity to learn. Number two, follow popular developer and developer evangelist accounts across all different types of social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, you name it, LinkedIn, follow them and get the content that they put out. Number three, follow popular YouTube accounts that have content that you're, that's, they're putting out that is teaching you exactly the kind of information you'd like to lead, as well as follow any additional blogs or read additional blogs and tutorials that teach you the things that you're interested in. Now you might have to find a couple of sites of where you're interested in, which there is a few ways to do that. For example, you might go to a subreddit and subscribe to that subreddit to see about all the new things that might've been released. And that's a valid option of how to stay abreast to new topics that are released on blogs. Or you could have a blog reader and start finding different links and ask on social media, Hey everybody, what blog should I be following if I'm an Android developer? Or what blog should I be following if I'm a Rails developer? And most likely you'll get some replies and just kind of go from there and just kind of go down the rabbit hole and start keeping track of the links that you find interesting and the sites you find interesting as well as the YouTube content. Number four, take courses. So this could be a course that's offered for free on YouTube like mine. It could be something on Udemy, Pluralsight, uh, a custom Thinkific one, something that somebody released on Teachable. There's a ton of platforms out there that teach content that people sell or release content on for free. Go take a course on something that you're trying to learn so you can learn it in a visual manner. Usually that helps solidify it. A lot of these also have ways that you can interact and follow along in a step-by-step -step manner. So take a course. And number five, create a test project with, within a simple domain. So create a note-taking app or a calorie counting app but keep it simple and your focus here is to just build with the technology that you're trying to learn and build a real application with it. Anytime you actually build something from the ground up with some new technology, it's gonna solidify in your head a lot more than you would believe. Now, those are my tips on how you can stay abreast of new technology. I hope that helps. And as always, if you're interested, please make sure you subscribe to the channel here. I'll be releasing a lot more content like this and I'll talk to you in the next video. Oh, 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 oh,